Good morning and welcome to St. Francis Church here online, live on a Sunday morning. It's really good to be with you. Here I am speaking to camera two on setting, pre-setting number three. Or is it camera one on pre-setting number five? I think it's this camera here. We were setting it all up yesterday and we had a lot of fun working out with the three different cameras as to which one to, to use when and how. And uh, so if it doesn't quite go to plan, it's because we're human and because we're just working together with it. This is uh, a worship service and we're here to worship God. What a wonderful opportunity we've got to be able to take church home with us this morning. And so let's take a moment's quiet. Let's get comfy wherever we are, settle down, open our hearts to be unsettled, to be challenged, to be loved, to be open to what God might want to say to each one of us this morning. Let's pray. Each day and each night, each shade and each light, we bend our knee in the eye of the Father who has created us, in the eye of the Son who has redeemed us, in the eye of the Spirit who has cleansed us, in love and affection, in wisdom and grace, in faith and in fear, forever and ever. Amen. Loving God, all the world belongs to you. Forgive us that we so often live as if the world belongs to us. Help us to learn how to use the things of your world with wisdom and humility and to beware of the needs of others, not just our own desires. When we are daunted by fear of the future, inspire us by your spirit to learn how to live hopefully. Move us through the beauty that we encounter in your world to creative ways of working with you for its sustainable future. Loving God, all the world belongs to you. Amen. And now let's join together in the words that you see in bold on the screen as we go through. Jesus invites us to a way of celebration, meeting and feasting with the humble and poor. Let us walk his way with joy. Jesus beckons us to a way of risk, letting go of our security. Let us walk his way with joy. Jesus challenges us to listen to the voices of those who have nothing to lose. Let us walk his way with joy. Jesus calls us to follow the way of the cross, where despair is transformed by the promise of new life. Let us walk his way with joy. Alleluia, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Now, I wonder if you've gone recently uh, off track a little bit. Maybe there's something that you wish you'd done, but you hadn't. Something that you hadn't done and that you wish you did. This morning, I had a bit of a, a mishap. I've been shaving for 45 years, and still I managed to cut myself a bit here. Now, that's all fine. I've just managed to stop it from bleeding, but then you're considering where you might get blood on something and to whether it will actually stop. So there's a whole load of things that, that go over from that just small little thing. Maybe there are little things that we need to be forgiven for, that we need to say sorry for, things that we always think we get right, and then suddenly we go our own way instead of God's way. It's the best way, it's the best thing to know that God so loved the world that he gave his only son, Jesus Christ, to save us from our sins, to be our advocate in heaven, and to bring us to eternal life. So let us now confess our sins in penitence and faith, lay them at his feet, not ours, hand them over to him. Firmly resolve to keep God's commandments and to live in love and peace with all.
we say together, Father, we have sinned against heaven and against you. We are not worthy to be called your children. We turn to you again. Have mercy on us. Bring us back to yourself as those who once were dead, but now have life through Christ our Lord. Amen. And because of Jesus, because of Easter, because of the cross and what Jesus did on the cross, I'm able to pray. May the Father of all mercies cleanse us from our sins and restore us to in his image, to the praise and glory of his name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And the collect for today, we say together, God, our Redeemer, you have delivered us from the power of darkness and brought us into the kingdom of your Son. Grant that as by his death he has called us to life, so by his continual presence in us he may ra raise us to eternal joy. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And so let's now stand to sing our first song. Well, this, uh, on the 13th of May, we have Thy Kingdom Come, the prayer, novena, the novena of prayer that Christianity are engaging with each year. And so let's go to a short video to introduce that to give us an idea as to what it's all about. God placed on the Archbishops of Canterbury and York's heart the importance of evangelism and witness. And of course, this must start in prayer. So in 2016, the Archbishops of Canterbury and York put out a call to prayer. The message was to the Anglican Church worldwide to pray for people to come to faith in Jesus Christ. They decided this should happen between Ascension to Pentecost, drawing on the traditional times of prayer as the disciples did in Acts 1 and 2. 
you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you will be my witnesses to the ends of the earth. When he had said this, he was lifted up, and a cloud took him out of their sight. Then they returned to Jerusalem and were constantly devoting themselves to prayer. When the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit, and that day about 3,000 persons were added. Before long, Roman Catholics, Methodists, Baptists, and many other denominations across the world began to join in Thy Kingdom Come, rediscovering the richness of this historic tradition. Momentum quickly built up, with Christians in different countries around the world beginning to pray together during these 11 days for five people they knew to become Christians. Year on year, more Christians joined the global wave of prayer, gathering to pray in small groups, churches, families, and as individuals. Prayer took place everywhere, in the streets and in church buildings, in schools and in community spaces in homes and on public transport, all over the place. Sometimes they prayed continuously for the 11 days, and other times they prayed in the mornings and evenings, or as a family together, or an individual saying a five-minute prayer on the go. People gathered to pray and celebrate, irrespective of their ecumenical differences. Roman Catholics and Methodists, Pentecostals and Anglicans, Baptists and Orthodox, side by side praying for the presence of the Holy Spirit to work in them for others. Now Christians in more than 100 countries are uniting in this prayer. Come Holy Spirit, let your kingdom come during this time. Will you join us? Let your kingdom come. Won't that be exciting to have a further push, as it were, on prayer during those 10 days? There are lots of things that we can get each individually get involved in or as groups, as it was saying there, praying at home, praying at the pub, praying wherever we're called to be praying. Um, there are uh, details on the notice sheet and Sarah will be talking a little bit about um, the, what we're going to be doing uh, during the notices later in the service too. But it's really exciting for, for me anyway to have seen where God has been at work in this project in, in uh, previous years. The youth group will be doing a, um, what's it called, an escape room online uh, with the, the, that project in mind. I guess that could be open to other home groups if you wanted to use it. Let's pray. Dear Lord, help us to know what your calling is on each of us each of our lives, to be involved in this global call to prayer. Help us to be open to your Holy Spirit at work in and through each of us, to further your kingdom here on earth. Amen. And so now let's go to the interview that Joe has done. He's been not out and about, but in and about, um, interviewing people on his screen. Hi there, Hilary. How's it going? Hi, Joe. Fine, thank you. How are you? Yeah, not bad. Thanks for joining me this morning to um, discuss things and see how things are going. I, I believe you've been in the church for a while, but for those who don't know you, I wondered if you could just sort of introduce yourself a bit. Okay. Um, I'm Hilary. I've been coming to St Francis Church for about 25 years now. I'm married to John. I have two grown-up children, two sons. I retired about eight years ago, took early retirement um, after some health issues. Um, John had retired about three years before me and he was having way too much fun. So I decided to retire with him and put a stop to all that. And since then, I've been doing voluntary work for a couple of local charities. OK. And during the last 12 months, how have you seen the pandemic affecting where you've been working and, and what you've been doing? It's been very tough, really, because obviously everything had to go virtual. And with James Scarth House, which is a cancer support centre in Romsey, obviously a lot of our work is face to face, and that was very hard. Mm. Um, so we had to do everything virtual, and that affected it a great deal. Um, and the other side of things, of course, was we weren't able to do fundraising. 
so the charities have been struggling financially yeah absolutely and and how have you seen seen god working in that time through the work that you've done and also in other ways around you i think in the community there have been great acts of kindness people coming together and looking out for each other very much in the local area has been good um and i think also through the charities the work people have carried on trying to support and help people through this um it's been really hard for the charities doing everything virtually obviously a lot of our work is face to face mm -hmm. but we have carried on doing online counseling um obviously the therapies have had to stop mm. um but it has reopened now in a small way but a lot of people because they're obviously having cancer treatments are very loath to to come in for face to face at the moment so I think that will take a while to build up yeah. people's confidence to come back so it's a very slow process but um, hopefully it will get back to where it was yeah yeah is there any specific prayers you would like for the areas that you're involved with I think prayers for the charities have obviously missed out on their big fundraising events in the last year and also street collections all their their normal ways of fundraising they've not been able to do so so and I think because people need their services even more now after the pandemic um, it would be great to pray for them yeah right well, shall we shall we pray loving father thank you thank you for your daughter Hillary thank you for the work that she does in support and help of, of those in need and those, those struggling we pray for the charities that Hillary is involved with, um, Marie Curie and the Jane Scarth House, and the work that they do. Please be with them and help them with their finances so that they are still able to reach out to the people in need with cancer and they are able to support them. And we pray also for, for the people that are supported by those two charities, and we pray that as we come out of lockdown that they have the confidence and the ability to be able to go and and have the treatments that they are providing and we thank you also for fellowship that we've had within the community during the last year and we thank you for the acts of kindness that people have done um, we thank you for the groups who have been able to support others we pray that this continues as lockdown is is slowly lifted um, and the people that are more cautious and anxious about the restrictions being lifted we pray that they still receive support so that they are able to go about their life and father we know we we pray that through this that people will come to know your love and feel your presence and your peace in this time when people are feeling anxious and scared Please be with them, Father. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, thank you, Hilary. Thank you for sharing uh, with us today. And I look forward to seeing you again soon in cafe. Thank you, Joe. Bye. Take care. Bye-bye. Thank you, Joe, and thank you, Hilary. Quite a, an encouragement for me to know that well, actually, you don't need a dog collar to pray out loud. You don't need to be in church to pray out loud. You don't need to have something big and wonderful to pray for or long words or whatever. But you can, in a conversation, as Joe's been ex um, demonstrating each week, as we talk about one another's lives, we can turn them into prayer and hand them over to the Lord. And obviously, we can all do that. And we can... Uh, perhaps increase the heat of those prayers uh, during the uh, Thy Kingdom Come project that I was talking about a few minutes ago. Thank you, Joe and Hilary. And so now let's turn to our Bible reading for Suzanne to bring us. Good morning, everybody. Um, this morning's Bible reading is taken from Acts chapter 10 beginning to read at verse 44 through to verse 48. The Gentiles received the Holy Spirit. While Peter was still speaking, the Holy Spirit fell upon all who heard the word. The circumcised believers who had come with Peter were astounded that the gift of the Holy Spirit 
had been poured out even on the Gentiles, for they heard them speaking in tongues and extolling God. Then Peter said, can anyone withhold the water for baptizing these people who have received the Holy Spirit just as we have? So he ordered them to be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. Then they invited him to stay several days. This is the word of the Lord. Fantastic. Thank you so much for reading for us today, Suzanne. Hi, Sarah here. Uh, it's nice having Cliff lead, actually, isn't it? Um, I've, I've let him loose. Um, no, he actually volunteered. That's what happened. I promise I don't stop him. Um, wow. Have you been watching the news this week? Because I don't know about you, but I found it a little bit surprising because Jersey's been hitting the headlines most days. Maybe you saw on uh, the news that French fishermen were sort of blockading the port of St. Helier in a row over fishing rights in Jersey waters. There you go, there's a scene from uh, the uh, blockade. Uh, it was all very exciting. Um, but you know what? Even more surprising to me was that it was our friend Ian who was briefing the world's media. Now, uh, the next slide, uh, there's Ian with his fantastic green tie. Uh, you will appreciate that Jersey is not very big, so it's very difficult not to know politicians there. Uh, but you know what? Suddenly, Jersey was thrust into the spotlight and Ian was all over the radio and television. And I'm more used to him cooking a barbecue for us, to be honest. And it was the last thing that I expected to find on the news this week. I mean, seriously, everything was fine, apart from being a bit windy when we left there on Monday. Thanks. Do you want to stop sharing the slides? Well, our Bible reading today was about a most surprising turn of events, more shocking even than Jersey hitting the headlines around the globe. And that was the news that the Holy Spirit had been poured out even on the Gentiles. And we heard in the passage that those who witnessed this event were astounded. And the passage that Suzanne read for us is really just the end of a story about how Peter, Jesus's disciple over so many years, had come to realise that God wanted all people to know about his love without exception or discrimination. And hopefully for most of us today, that's actually fairly obvious because that is who God is after all. But remember that Jesus and his disciples were Jewish. They were God's chosen people, chosen to tell God's story about a God who loved them and who had rescued them from slavery in Egypt, who had taken them to a promised land and given them a new way to live. Finally, God gave them his only son, Jesus, to be the long-awaited Messiah. And of course, Peter and his friends were Jewish. They lived with Jesus for three years and they heard and saw the Jewish scriptures fulfilled in front of them. And they continued to go to the synagogue at that time and to live according to Jewish law. Until now. Because earlier in today's story, Peter had had a vision of animals that were unclean for Jews. And much to Peter's horror, God had told him to kill them and to eat them. Then Peter was invited to the house of a Gentile where Jews were not allowed to go and eat. But Peter was invited there. Uh, it was a Gentile who was actually very open to God uh, and his name was Cornelius. And at Cornelius's house with some very heavy prompting from the Holy Spirit, Peter told Cornelius and all his friends about Jesus, about how he and his disciples had witnessed Jesus doing miraculous healings and deliverances, about how he died tragically on a cross, and then incredibly how they and many others had seen Jesus risen from the dead. And so to today's passage. 
While Peter was explaining all these things, the Holy Spirit fell upon those listening, and they couldn't help but praise God. This is a whole new surprising development, one that astounded the Jewish believers. This new development was that the membership of God's family was no longer limited to the Jews, to one single ethnic group, or by sticking rigidly to the law. Becoming part of God's family was now possible by simply receiving the Holy Spirit along with recognising and believing the truth about Jesus. It must have been for a bit of a surprise too for those Gentiles who were suddenly filled with the Holy Spirit. They started praising God uh, that they barely knew and they started speaking in languages that they couldn't understand. But Peter could see what was going on. He recognized the Holy Spirit at work and he was able to explain it to them, to help them understand, to get them baptized and even to go over to their place so that they could just explain things a little bit more. What really strikes me in this story is the surprising work of the Holy Spirit that brings all of this about. It was the Holy Spirit who prompted Cornelius to invite Peter over to his house. And even before then, the Holy Spirit was clearly at work in Cornelius's life. Chapter 10, the beginning of Acts chapter 10 says that Cornelius feared God and prayed constantly, even though Cornelius didn't really know this God whom he feared. And then it was the Holy Spirit who gave Peter the vision of the unclean animals and revealed that God doesn't show partiality. It was the Holy Spirit who told Peter to go to Cornelius's house and who equipped Peter to teach about Jesus. And of course, it was the Holy Spirit who came in power on those who didn't expect to receive anything that day and who found themselves demonstrating the power of God as they spoke in tongues. Well, I wonder if we are tempted to conclude that that is a good story about something that happened 2000 years ago, that that was for then, but things like that just don't happen these days. But, you know, we do have the same Holy Spirit and he works in the same way that he always did. After all, God never changes and therefore neither does his spirit. And the Holy Spirit is at work all over the place in our world today. There was a study by Tear Fund some three years ago that found out that over 50% of adults in the UK say that they pray regularly. At the start of the pandemic in March 2020, searches on prayer on Google went up 50% over and above the same number of searches for prayer just the month before in February 2020. Many people are a bit like Cornelius and pray to a God whom they haven't had the opportunity to get to know. Many people, indeed many of us, I'm sure, act on prompts and nudges that we can't really explain. I don't know how many times you might have explained something as I have as a coincidence or good timing or serendipity. Maybe it's easier to call it fate. But these coincidences happen when we pray and they happen because of God's Holy Spirit to bring about God's kingdom in this world now. Here are a few examples from this week's news of situations where God's kingdom has come a little closer through the prompts and power of the Holy Spirit. Let me go back to my friend Ian trying to sort out the French fishing boat situation in Jersey. Now, he's a politician, of course, and I have no idea if he got everything right. I mean, he's a human being, so I very much doubt that he did because none of us do, right? But he has emphasized justice for both the French and Jersey fishermen. He's emphasized dialogue and reconciliation. 
these are kingdom values and he's a Christian. That's how we know him. We know him through church. And so I know that he will have asked God to equip him and to help him. Also in the news this week, you may have seen that United States have supported a World Trade Organization move to lift patent protection on coronavirus vaccines. That would allow so much greater access to COVID vaccines and at fairer and more affordable prices. Things that we've been praying for, more kingdom values. Locally, it's Christian Aid Week this week, and that gives us a chance to share our wealth with those who need it. In our own community here, there are signs of God's kingdom as Eastleigh Basics Bank collect food and distribute it. As Christians in poverty set up down in Eastleigh and help people in debt. And just as well as in those myriad acts of kindness that Hillary was mentioning in Joe's interview earlier, something we've seen so much of that's been highlighted in the pandemic. Is it fanciful to suggest that this is the Holy Spirit working in our midst to see God's kingdom come? Not at all. It's a reflection of God who we worship, of our creator and sustainer, whose mission is to draw all people to himself, to restore this earth that we live in. And what's incredible is that he gives us who believe a chance, a role to work with him in it. We're invited to listen to the prompts of the spirit, to act on those prompts and to get involved in working to see God's kingdom come. We can participate by praying for it, by recognizing the signs of the kingdom, by explaining what's going on to those around us as we see answers to prayer, and by introducing others to the fullness of life that we find in Jesus when we choose to make God king in our lives. These are all ways that the spirit is at work. And it's just the same ways that the spirit was at work in those events that led up to the Gentiles receiving the Holy Spirit that we heard about in our passage today. So as we finish, let me ask you, where do you see the Holy Spirit at work around you? Last week in our intercessions, Linda used a prayer that comes from a new hymn that's uh, put out uh, as part of the, Holy, uh, the Thy Kingdom Come prayer initiative. And it's a hymn that recognises that God is at work all around us in the most surprising places to bring his kingdom in by the power of his Holy Spirit, transforming, reviving and healing our society. And we're going to use that to worship in a moment. The words will be on the video clip, so do join in. You'll know the tune. But as we listen to it, can I ask you to be considering where you see that the Holy Spirit is at work around you? Where do you sense God nudging you to join in? Maybe for many of us, the most surprising place to discover that God is at work is in our own hearts and lives when we invite him to join us. And so let's pray together. God, thank you so much that you don't show partiality as the Apostle Peter discovered that each one of us is your favourite. Please, would you give us eyes to see the work of your Holy Spirit all around us and to join in with what you are doing, wherever that is, in the shops, at work, at school, in our communities. Would you fill us, empower us and equip us to know you and to serve you to build your kingdom here? Amen. We're going to worship together using the song on the video that's going to play now. We seek your kingdom
inscribing your heart on history's page. Make us again what we were made to be. Transform, revive, and heal society. Oh, Lord, may your kingdom come. Just such a wonderful song of praise there. Just a little bit of me wishes I could look that cool in a pork pie hat, though. But it is about uh, his kingdom coming here on earth. Let's now turn to Katie for our intercessions. Good morning, everybody. Shall we pray? Our loving Father, we thank you for the welcome and encouragement you give us as we come to pray together now. Thank you so much that we can rest for these moments in your love and that we can know that your Holy Spirit is working through our prayers and in ways which go far beyond all our hopes and longings. For our prayers this morning, I'm going to focus around the Holy Spirit as wind, the Holy Spirit as fire, and the Holy Spirit as breath. So we'll just have a few prayers as prompts and then some moments of silence at the end of each group of prayers when we could picture the Holy Spirit as wind, fire, or breath, and in the silence bring our own prayers. So Holy Spirit, we we ask you to come to us now as wind. We pray that you will blow like wind to bring change where it's needed. We pray for individuals who need change in their own lives, for everyone stuck in addiction, stuck in unforgiveness, stuck in guilt. We pray too for everybody who's anxious or stressed especially for young people studying for exams at the moment, particularly if the prospect of getting a job in the future seems a million miles away. We pray for countries which need political change and freedom from conflict and war. Myanmar, Syria, Yemen, Afghanistan, Israel. Lord, we pray those names very often and we pray them again now and bring them to you. We pray for leaders from all countries for honesty and integrity and wise decisions. Holy Spirit, we pray that you will blow like the wind and set things moving at every stage of the process of COVID vaccines getting to all people in each country which needs them. And Father, we pray for changes in our own country. We lift to you people who feel perhaps disappointed at the moment and frustrated at recent election results. We pray for the people who have been voted in, for them to use their new opportunities 
really wisely. And we thank you. We're looking forward to the amazing opportunities of the Thy Kingdom Come Prayer Initiative starting on Thursday. Please prompt many people over the world, including us, to commit to pray and maybe try new ways to pray. We just have a few moments silence to picture you Holy Spirit as wind and bring our own prayers to you. Lord, help us to be ready and open for the wind of your spirit so that we're moving like, like sails on boats or the blades of wind turbines powered by you. So we're part of the changes you are directing in the world. And we pray, Holy Spirit, come to us now as fire. We ask you to bring energy and warmth and power to everybody working to bring your kingdom more and more into being. We pray for people struggling to get water, food, to look after their families and just to make ends meet. We are so thankful for Christian AIDS work in many parts of the world. We pray that your Holy Spirit will re-energize them working at the grassroots, helping people to cope with poverty and climate change and with the COVID pandemic. We pray for the Christian aid service this evening and the picture quiz. And even without the usual house to house collections, Lord, please help the donations still to come in. And we ask you, Lord, that your Holy Spirit will fire up our, our response to the need our planet is in with climate change. Help us to think and act and imagine and not grow tired or despondent as we respond. Thank you for Jan's article in the Chrysalis magazine and we pray for the impact of those articles as people read them now and in future editions. As we pray for people in our own community, we're praying in our cycle of prayer for people living in Fairburn Close Larkspur Drive and Collins Close. And we pray, Father, for everybody who comes to the church cafe, for friendships and connections to be growing. We just have a few moments of silence to pray for people we particularly want to ask the Holy Spirit's fire to, to come to. Father, help us to be warmed by the fire of your spirit so that other people too can feel the warmth and heat of your love and be moved to respond to you. And we pray, Holy Spirit, that you will come to us as breath. We pray that you will breathe your love into everyone in need and distress. We're praying particularly this morning for the people of India, for those in desperate need of oxygen and other medical supplies and for the heartbreak that their relatives and friends and the medical teams must be feeling, trying against all the odds to bring care and comfort to them. We pray for Michael Flack's colleague, Shrey, back in India, trying to care for his parents who have COVID. And there must be many, many others in similar situations. We pray for those who are dealing with health issues who we know. Maybe it's ourselves, maybe it's our families or friends. On our prayer chain, we're remembering Fergus and Louise. And we're continuing to pray for Tracy and for her dad. We don't know exactly what the situation is this morning, but we know he's nearing the end of his life. And we pray for you to surround them with your love. Father, we pray for 
those who are grieving, particularly for Julia and her family. And we remember the family and friends of George Cantell and Kate Barron, who lived in Valley Park and who've died in recent weeks. Lord, we pray for everybody mourning, family and friends they, they've lost over the past year, especially if the sense we have of moving on and hope with the easing of lockdown is maybe jarring with their emotions and heightening their sense of loss and pain. Lord Jesus, please breathe your Holy Spirit into each person like you breathed on your disciples after the resurrection and said, peace be with you. We just have a few moments of silence again. Lord Jesus, help us to sense the breath of your Holy Spirit and to breathe your life to others through the words we speak and how we live and through the people we are. Holy Spirit, wind and fire and breath, please fill all these situations and people we've been praying for. We pray that you will transform and revive and heal us and heal your world. Shall we join together to say the Lord's Prayer? <clears throat> Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Thank you, Katie. You might have come to understand with what we've been going on about this morning is that we consider prayer to be a powerful thing in our lives and in the world around us. If there's something that you've been moved by or challenged by or something that you don't understand about thy kingdom come, the Holy Spirit, the gifts of the Spirit, lots of things that can often confuse us um, unless we understand uh, them a little more. If there's some, something like that you'd, that you'd like to talk more about, then please do get in touch with Sarah or myself or Joe, one of the team at the church, and we can uh, walk alongside you. Um, we can stop and pray with you and talk things through. Um, Sarah notices. Why don't we just start by giving thanks for our, all that's been given financially. Lord, thank you so much that you provide for all our needs. And we thank you so much for all that's been given through our offering plate, through bank accounts and through donations on the website. Uh, Lord, we are so grateful. Um, and we thank you, too, for all that has been given through lives outpoured uh, for your service. Would you use all that we have and all that we are for your kingdom's sake? Amen. Brilliant. So uh, I've got some bands of marriage to read and it's a delight uh, to see uh, that Kevin and Chloe are with us this morning. I'm not sure if Jasper and Sevi are, um, but we don't know. Uh, that uh, It doesn't matter at all, uh, but we are delighted to have you with us. So let me just read these bands of marriage for the last time. So I published the bands of marriage between Kevin Charles Ives of this parish and Chloe Jane Gocher also of this parish. And I also published the bands of marriage between uh, Mr. Jasper Singh of this parish and Miss Michelle Sevi McGill also of this parish. These are for the third time of asking. And if anybody knows any reason why these couples should not be married, then please let me know. More to the point, let's pray for them. 
Lord, thank you so much uh, for Kevin and Chloe Jane and for Jaspal and Sevi as they prepare for their special days. And we pray that you would be continuing to enable them uh, to prepare for the celebration of their wedding days. And Lord, we continue to pray more than that, that you would bind them together for lifelong and happy marriages that would be a blessing to all those around them. In Jesus' name, amen. Oh, there's lots of other things going on. It's very exciting. There's a Christian Aid Week service at seven o'clock this evening. It's on Zoom and the details are in our newsletter. So do have a look and join in there. If you're able to give to Christian Aid Week, uh, then please find the details again in the newsletter. There's a hot link there or use a QR code. Just hold your camera phone over it. You'll go immediately to the right link. It's much quicker than um, entering it all into your browser. Um, but there won't be door-to-door -door collections. Obviously, with the pandemic, that's not appropriate. Uh, but it's really easy to give online. So I really encourage you to take a look at the information to consider whether you can give to Christian Aid this year and also to continue uh, to, to consider hopping on to the service later. I'm really excited. We um, had a, a plea, uh, we, a campaign, if you like, to twin your vaccine. I was hoping that we might be able to raise a thousand pounds, thinking about sort of 10 pounds per person for 100 people in the congregation. And we've got about 900 pounds but uh, actually, there's all sorts of people who've given to that campaign. So please keep going. It'll go to COVID, which is one of the main uh, charities through UNICEF delivering vaccines worldwide. Uh, keep on giving. If, you're, uh, if you haven't given yet, please consider doing so. It's really easy to do so and such a good cause. Uh, this week, uh, we have morning prayer here in the church building at 10 o'clock tomorrow morning, and that will be followed at 11 o'clock by cafe outside, and there's cafe outside between 9 and 11 on Wednesday too. Loads of opportunity, so do come and just take that opportunity for us to get together again uh, and start to enjoy uh, being uh, just getting to know each other once again. It's just been so lovely to be able to do that. On Thursday, it's Ascension Day when we remember Jesus going back to heaven. Uh, I should confess I'm going to be uh, putting, I think Dawn might still be listening actually, I'm going to be putting together a school assembly uh, for St Francis School this week and my mind is just going crazy about how Ascension Day reenactments could happen um, but I guess we're going to have to keep that one a bit safe aren't we but anyway watch this space. Dawn don't worry it'll all be fine. Um, so anyway, Ascension Day service, 7 p.m. here in the church building. It's the service of said communion. Joe will be speaking for us. Uh, please could you just uh, drop me an email if you'd like to come. We'd really love to have you. Uh, and it's a great opportunity to worship together and not too early in the morning. So if you, don't, if you find the 8.45 a bit early for you, try out the 7 p.m. It'd be great to see you. Gosh, I think that's all the notices. They're all in the newsletter anyway. If you're not getting the newsletter, drop me a note. Uh, if you'd like to catch up on this service later in any aspect of it, uh, it'll be on Facebook, on our Facebook page, St. Francis Valley Park a bit later on. And also there is information on our website. Also just search on St. Francis Valley Park. Thank you very much. That's all the notices, Cliff. And so now, now let's stand to sing our closing song.
need your power in Like we've said, do contact us for prayer should you need it. Um, do get in touch for anything else, either through the office or to us directly. We're going to go into breakout rooms as soon as I close with the blessing. Do stay online and join one of those groups. Unmute yourself and have a bit of chat with those that are in the same room. Be good to see you there. If there's something that you haven't liked about the service that you would like to complain about, then my name's uh, Joe Sweetnam and I'm the curate here. Um, if, if you think it's gone well and you've got something positive to say, then I'm Cliff McClelland and I'm married to Sarah and I'm not the curate here. Um, but either way, give us some feedback so we can uh, move with whatever we feel called to be doing what's right uh, in this place for now as we go forward, potentially meeting in the building here at different times in the coming months. So let's close uh, with a blessing. May the love of the Lord Jesus draw you to himself. The power of the Lord Jesus strengthen you in his service. And the joy of the Lord Jesus fill your hearts and the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with you always. Amen. Go in the peace of Christ. Alleluia, 
Alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Alleluia.